Hello guys, since I did a best finds of 2021 for my arrowhead hunting finds, I thought I'd do a, a video, one for my best rock hounding finds. So I'll be showing you six of my best mineral specimens that I personally found rock hounding this year. Number six will be this beautiful light green Tinnalite Tremolite series crystal that I found at the Grace Lake Road Cut. It's a beautiful example of this mineral series and a great example of the crystal shape with the termination. And it's just, it's got beautiful color and it's got great transparency. So that's why I have it as my number six best mineral. Here is the fifth, my fifth best find is a piece of perisrite from the Crystal Lake mine, more specifically the dumps near the waterside. It's a beautiful large piece of perisrite. I wetted it down, but it's still kind of hard to tell, but you can see the beautiful blue and silver sheen that perisrite gives off, which is known as argillescence. And this was just one of the biggest pieces I found there. So that's why this is my number five pick. Here is my number four pick, my fourth pick. It is a very nice large zircon specimen from the CN Rock Dump. I got really lucky and found this large chunk full of a lot of zircons. A lot of them were broken, but on the corner was this nice large intact zircon with smaller zircons you can see over here but this zircon measures around uh nine millimeters so up basically one centimeter in size so it's like a one centimeter large crystal so it's actually quite large for a zircon from that locality and it's just it's got very nice uh faces and like it's very well defined and grown and the color is nice and so that's why I uh, have this as my number four pick. My number three pick is going to be these three Titanite specimens from Titanite Hill. Um, I couldn't, <laughs> it, these were my three favorite Titanite specimens so I wasn't just going to do three in a row, hey here's another Titanite specimen so I decided to bunch them up. Uh, to, I picked these for their unique crystal shape and also just the, um, just their, um, beauty. Let's put it that way. So this one I specifically picked because it has a very unique crystal shape. It's not the regular wedge shape titanite. Um, and, and I had to do some research on why it's like this and I believe it has to do with um, these sometimes when Titanite grows as a floater crystal so this one first of first grew loose in like a mineral soup it can form this shape but this shape is quite rare and it's much more common just to find the uh, wedge shaped crystals of Titanite so this is a really cool find The next one is this very narrow Titanite crystal, which is kind of unique because Titanite crystals tend to be kind of like, they tend to have a similar length to width ratio. So they're kind of very squatted crystals. So you don't see these long crystals often. And finally, this beautiful cluster of two very well-defined wedge-shaped titanites. And here you can see the classic wedge shape that I was talking about. And these are just very well-defined, got beautiful luster. No, like, it only broke off right where it was connected to the matrix. So basically whole, very well-defined, nice, very beautiful cluster of titanite crystals. My second pick has to be this large, the largest 
Chlorectorite um, crystal I managed to collect this year from the Essenville road cut. Um, it had a natural fracture that had been filled in with calcite that unfortunately broke, so I had to glue it back together. But this at first had been broke, was already cracked like this and filled in with calcite. And then my clumsy ass <laughs> dropped this uh, crystal and it broke along the fracture, but only there. So thankfully it was an easy fix. But yeah, this is a nice large double terminated fluororectorite crystal. Um, the terminations aren't that clean. That's the only thing that kind of like I wish they were a little cleaner. But that just has to do with when they were hardening. Um, they were semi-growing and then they reached a temperature where they kind of stopped growing and they hadn't fully terminated. So you get these like weird kind of lumpy terminations, but they are terminated. Um, another mineral that I've, I've found before that seems to have this issue too is appetite. Sometimes ap a lot of the time, especially in, um, I find the appetite I find at um, Titanite Hill. The terminations are kind of lumpy, which I think is a due to a part of them being so close to the surface. So they're stuck in a three freeze and thaw. So they kind of get weather worn as well. But I also think it has to do with that when those appetite crystals were forming, they didn't didn't get a chance to fully terminate properly. And so they kind of got these lumpy terminations like this uh, fluororectorite specimen. But I'm quite happy with this one. This was the biggest one I managed to collect. It's a very nice size. And I'm and happy. It's a very rare mineral. Altogether speaking. Like there's like maybe four locations where you can find this. And the Essenville Road Cut is known for having some of the largest out there. So I'm quite I'm quite happy that I got the chance to collect this. And here is my first pick. Um, this actually came from one of the only two club-led um, trips I went on. Uh, due to COVID, the mineral club I'm part of and the mineral club group. It's kind of like a Canada-wide group and then there's local chapters. We didn't really get to do anything with like collecting. And then in, during the su summer when stuff was a little down and we weren't... When we had... Uh, when stuff was open, more open, we had the chance to go to a couple spots. So this came from a, a decommissioned quarry near um, St. Catharines, Ontario. Um, it's called the Queenston Quarry. And this is a very nice selenite specimen. You can see this very nice long white selenite crystal. And then you can see it's dotted around with smaller selenite crystals. There's a cluster here. There's a bunch here. And there's one where my thumb is up here. So it's a very nice specimen. I had some other ones. I had a larger cluster, but that one was quite fr fractured. And I, I'm still going to keep it. I have to clean it up more. And same with this one. I think I'm going to take this mineral and trim it back here and then trim it up front. So it's not like there's so much matrix here, but I want to keep the small, small selenite crystals and clusters here along with the large one. So I'll have to trim it along here basically and then trim it on the bottom here. Just so that it, there's not so much matrix taking up, you know, the attention of this awesome specimen. But yeah, very lovely selenite specimen. I was quite happy when I collected this. And you can actually see on the back here, there's even a small one growing in between. Very cool specimen. I'm quite happy with this. I thought I'd also like my arrowhead hunting best finds video do some honorable mentions these guys aren't minerals so they can't be part of it but they were still cool finds that i technically it was a fossil hunting trip but eh, close enough they're made out of rocks um so these are two um crinoid calyxes crinoids are a type of e extinct uh, aquatic creature and these would have been like the quote unquote heads of the creature. And these are qu quite rare. And I found these on my first ever fossil hunting trip. So I was quite happy to find these. And you can see these you, these heads were segmented or plated. You can see here how this head got crushed a bit. It would have been much rounder. 
but this guy he got crushed a bit so you can see how the plating is cr being crushed and it's quite a cool specimen and you got little other bits of fossils here and you can see where so these heads would have had these arms with little tendrils on them and you can see where the heads would have attached right here 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 and i think there's one more supposed to be over here but it kind of got crushed in and destroyed so i think it would have been like this bit over here but yeah this was a i found this in two pieces actually and i just thought it was kind of a strange shaped thing so i brought it over to the guy who this was one of the club trips i got to go on it was to a fossil place called hungry hollow and uh, it's more in southern ontario not near london actually it's near arcona um and it, it, this place goes kind of through the Ar Arcona shale formations. So there's a lot of cool fossils. And I brought this to the trip leader. And he was quite impressed <laughs> that a uh, new beam like me found it. Because there are a lot, I think there were a decent amount of new people there, he said. And, you know, they stuck around for a bit. But I was, I was pretty determined to find some cool stuff. So I stuck around the whole day, even though it was... It was a brutally hot day. Like there was no breeze, the sun was beating down, it was quite hot, but yeah. So it was a cool little specimen. And then on this, that same trip, I also found this smaller pyrotized um, uh, crinoid head and you can actually see a bit of its arms are still attached. I'll probably throw up a couple nice close-up pictures of this one to get all the nice details but this is a nice little pyrotized crinoid head these are two different species so actually i'll probably when i post the video i'll have the, their species names up in the corner but i thought i'd share these guys also because these were some really cool finds that i found this year but of course they're just only honorable mentions so guys, if you liked this video and you like this type of content, uh, please think of dropping a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate your patronage. And I hope you guys have a uh, good day.